Hey everyone. Okay. If you have a child who um, has, you know, picky eating, is addicted to sugar, loves carbs, wants to eat nothing but fishy crackers, noodles, all that type of stuff, and they happen to have difficulties with learning and behavior, then you want to tune in. Um, a big factor with a lot of these kids is candida and yeast overgrowth. And I want to be clear that it's not the only factor, as I always mention, it's never usually just one thing, but candida plays a huge role, which I'm going to get into another time in terms of the causes and why so many kids have this issue. And it's not just as simple as antibiotics or even too much sugar. Um, but what's really interesting is what a 2019 study out of Baylor College of Medicine uh, found, and that was that candida crosses the blood brain barrier contributes to neuroinflammation and results in brain fog and impairments with memory that was comparable to Alzheimer's. And so I just thought this was absolutely incredible. Um, there's been several studies. This is not the only study. This is, there's been several studies, even as far back as 1986 and probably even further back. Um, but Dr. William Crook, who was kind of scoffed at in the eighties, whenever he linked yeast overgrowth or candied overgrowth to learning disability, um, learning disabilities, emotional dysregulation, um, ADHD, even food sensitivities, and all kinds of other issues that a lot of our kids are dealing with. And basically what happens is this candida in the gut can result in poor behavior and learning. And the way that it does that is number one, these, uh, not bugs, but fungus basically releases alcohol, number one. And this can cause our children to appear drunk. And I don't mean, you know, completely drunk, but there's some pretty fascinating stuff that's come out of this. So because the yeast byproduct releases alcohol, among other things, other byproducts, not just that, it can result in, in like just very inappropriate or excessive silliness and laughter, poor coordination, brain fog, and so forth. In severe cases, this is to me, mind blowing. There have actually been people who've blown over on a breathalyzer test who never consumed any alcohol. And this was in both um, children and adults. So it's definitely proved to me that this is going to have a very significant impact on our child's ability to learn, self-regulate, go about their daily life, all of that type of stuff. If we aren't looking at this factor. The other thing is that as yeast ferments, it not only releases these toxic byproducts that are, you know, bad for the nervous system and the brain like alcohol, it also releases something called acetaldehyde. Um, and this is going to basically act as kind of like an anesthetic. It will kind of put the brain to sleep. So the alcohol that it releases can depress the nervous system. The acetaldehyde can basically put the brain to sleep or, you know, basically slow down processing, cognition, um, compromise memory. And that, as you know, can affect our coordination, which if you've been following me for a while, our movements, both gross, fine motor skills, balance, all that is very, very intricately connected to our ability to learn and self-regulate both the sensory stimuli in our environment, focus, emotional regulation, all that ADHD type of stuff and so forth. So what I found really interesting is how acetaldehyde, how it does that. Cause a lot of people are always curious, like, how does this, does, how does this even make sense? So it impairs cognition and learning number one, because it can create a B1 deficiency, which is a critical brain nutrient. Number two, damage brain cells. Um, and when they studied this, they found that was also very severe and could be comparable to people who've had, who have a history of severe alcoholism or as well, um, people who have Alzheimer's. And then the third thing is it reduces oxygen transportation by the red blood cells to the brain. So basically insufficient oxygen to the brain, which is so underestimated, right? Um, but yet studies show when these kids are moving uh, consistently throughout the day, their brain is better oxygenated and they're able to learn better. So yeast overgrowth, when there is an overgrowth of yeast, so I want to be clear that yeast exists in our gut and it's supposed to be there in, you know, a moderate or safe amount, if you will. I don't want to say safe as it, or unsafe as if it's really dangerous, but it is there, but we have to keep it in check. And so when there is too much yeast, the liver can't clear the toxic byproducts that yeast releases. So it's one thing if we have a normal amount of yeast releasing a tiny bit of alcohol or our body's just 
no problem getting rid of it and so forth, or a tiny bit of acetaldehyde, or there's all kinds of other ones byproducts that it releases as well. But if we already have a compromised liver. And I, when I say compromised, a lot of our kids have sluggish livers. They don't have to have fatty liver disease or some major liver issue like jaundice for their detoxification to not be optimal. They could even just have certain genetic mutations. So the result is that the liver cannot keep up and these toxins are then going to recirculate into the bloodstream, go through the blood brain barrier. And that is ultimately going to affect brain chemistry, right? And brain function. So that's the result is slow cognitive processing, poor learning, poor memory, emotional dysregulation, all of that type of stuff. So I'm going to be talking um, as we go on in the next week or two on yeast um, candida, how to recognize it, what are the causes, how to get on top of it and so forth. But let me know in the comments below, does any of this resonate? Does your child like, is your child a picky eater? Do they tend to gravitate towards sugar and carbs and really want to eat that? Have you noticed after they eat a high carb or high sugar meal that they're very silly? It might not be a blood sugar crash. It could be that the yeast are feasting and this is really releasing a lot of byproduct and so forth and affecting their brain's ability to function. So if you are curious and want to learn more about this, I'm actually going to be giving a talk October 28th, free talk on the Friday at 12 p.m. Eastern. Replays will be available to anyone who registers. I'm going to be doing a talk on the biology of learning and behavior. So understanding how nutrition, toxicity, gut health, and so forth impacts brain chemistry, which thereby impacts our child's learning and behavior and so forth, and how we can address and improve brain chemistry naturally by changing their lifestyle, diet, and tackling some of these um, dubious issues going on in their body. So I'll put a link uh, to sign up for that in the comments below, but let me know what are you seeing at home? Do you think there is a connection with this and your child? Have a great day, everyone. Thanks for watching.